Good morning and welcome to Westside Baptist Church. This is Sunday School on April 24th, 2022. And we're starting a new series that is called Christ's Return, Living with the End in Mind. <clears throat> we should expect to have some difficulties in our life if we follow our Savior and Lord. Since the earliest days of the church, each of the generations have, have wondered if they were going to be in the end times, just like we are looking at the end times or what we think might be the end times and the return of our Lord and Savior uh, called the second coming. In Greek, it is the parousia, uh, talking about things, events that will happen in the end times. But we can expect hardships simply because we follow our Lord and Savior, the Messiah. Matthew chapters 24 and 25 record the Mount of Olives discourse and this uh, happened just after, a day or two after, the triumphal entry into the capital city. That is Jerusalem. And this was just a few days before he was crucified. And the end times talk about the second coming uh, of the Son of Man in his glory and in judgment. And the scripture that we will be looking at comes from Matthew chapter 24, verses 1 through 14. And uh, we will be talking about the end times and standing strong for the Lord for the next six weeks. Let us pray. Our Lord and God, we again thank you that we can look into your word, Lord, and we ask that the Holy Spirit would show us the things that you want us to know and to understand about what is going to happen at the end times. We thank you that we have your word. And Lord, there are others. There are many other, other books that also talk about it, but we need to only look at your book, Lord. And we ask that you would guide us. And I pray this in the name of your Son, our Savior. Matthew chapter 24, verses 1 through 3, talks about what our Lord said and what he did. And it says this, After Jesus left and was going out of the temple, his disciples came up and called his attention to its buildings. He replied to them, Do you see all these things? Truly, I tell you, not one stone will be left here on another that will not be thrown down. While he was sitting on the Mount of Olives, the disciples approached him approached him privately and said, tell us 
when will these things happen? And what is the sign of your coming and of the end of the age? The writer of this book, it was Matthew. He was a tax collector. He was hated by the Jews because he took their tax money and he gave it to the Roman government. But our Lord and Savior saw something very special in this man and uh, he was the writer of this book and he wrote this book before A.D. 70 because uh, that was the year uh, that the temple was burned, it was destroyed, it was leveled so there was not one stone upon another stone. This was the second temple. The first one was built by Solomon in uh, 960 BC. This was the second one that was built after the return of the Jews uh, to the capital city from the exile. And that was in 515. Now, King Herod, uh, Herod the Great, uh, in 72 BC, uh, he did some, some restoration and he added a few buildings uh, on the property at that time. But in AD 70, it was destroyed by the Romans under Titus. So Jesus was saying that in the future, this temple would be torn down. But really, there was no need for the temple anymore because things had, had changed with the crucifixion and the resurrection of our Lord. And so God transferred from a building of wood and stone and metal to a person. Jesus Christ himself. And the temple was not needed anymore to fulfill God's plan because at the resurrection, the, the true temple of God was made up of the bodies of his followers, that's you and I, since then. Individually, we have the Holy Spirit living in us, and as the church, as the universal church, we are His, and He lives in us. The Holy Spirit abides in, in us. So, at the time, his disciples didn't really understand all that was going on. And so they wanted to know the sign of his second coming and the end of the age. They wanted to know what else might happen. So there is quite a bit written about the second coming it, it is called the parousia, 
and uh, it has a lot to do with divine visitation. In other words, he, he is coming back to earth to get us and to take us home. And it also about the end of of the history here on on earth and that is that is called eschatology that's the study of the final events here on earth and it will of course involve the second coming and the final judgment of of us all <clears throat> so in many years that have gone by there has been a lot of his followers that actually have fallen have fallen away and uh, people have been misled by about what is going to happen. And we've seen that uh, with things like, like David Koresh, Jim Jones, and, and several others. There have been, in the last hundred years uh, or so, over 33 that have said they were the Messiah and that the world was going to end in, on such and such a date, but Jesus is going to tell us how to look at these things. And so, he goes on in Matthew chapter 24, verses 4 uh, through 8, and he warns them about what is going to happen. When they ask him when the end of the world was going to be, and ask him about the end times, this is what he said. Matthew 24, 4 through 8. Jesus replied to them, Watch out that no one deceives you. For many will come in my name, saying, I am the Messiah, and they will deceive many. You are going to hear of wars and rumors of wars, so that you cannot be alarmed because these things must take place, but the end is not yet. For nation will rise up against nation and kingdom against kingdom. There will be famines and earthquakes in various places. All these events are the beginning of labor pains. Now, he was, he was referring, of course, uh, to the labor that a mother uh, has during childbirth, that we are going to have pains, issues, all kinds of problems. He warned them against the false signs and the false teachers. He says to let no one deceive you because even Christians can be misled and have been by the false teachers, uh, you know, claiming to have divine insights into the future, like James Jones, David Koreth, Sun Moon, and even guys like 
like Charles Manson. <clears throat> he said, they will come in my name and they want to assume my authority. They will claim to be the Messiah and have the same have the same power that I do. But we know what the Bible says. Only Jesus has that power because he was God and 100% man. And he had no sin. And we know that all of the other religious leaders have have sinned. Only Jesus is the true Messiah. He, he was anointed by God and he accepted the sonship and the kingship uh, in Mark 8, 29 and 30. All others that say they have such authority are imposters. But people can, can be deceived by these false teachers. Jesus went on to say that we will hear, hear rumors of wars and there will be wars. And uh, of course we hear that and have seen that throughout all of history since we started uh, to record things we have always heard and read about wars happening uh, the book of revelation talks about the final war it's at armageddon and it will be far worse than any war that we have ever seen on this earth. We read about that there in Revelation 16, 16, and also chapter 19, verses 17 through 19. But Jesus made it clear not to let these rumors of war frighten us, nor should we take these wars to be signs that the end is, is near. After the Second World War, uh, the United Nations was, was formed by the victorious countries to uh, supposedly resolve the international conflicts in a peaceful way. Now we know that that hasn't happened. We have seen what is going on right now with the Russian invading uh, the Ukraine and uh, we don't see any peace for sure we don't see the work of the United Nations actually helping to make that peace they are trying but the wars and the rumors of war is not the only problems that the world faces. We have, have natural disasters. We have, have famines and we have earthquakes. And Jesus said, when you see all of this, that is the beginning of the labor pains. So it is unwise for us to see these special signs as 
the end time event happening right away. Some commentators, you know, say that the wars and the famines and earthquakes and, and all of that have increased over the decades, and it, it appears that they have. But Jesus will come when the time is right, according to God's wisdom and his plan. So we can only get our information from his word and, and be ready for him whenever he might come. Jesus goes on to tell his followers this at the Mount of Olives. He says, Matthew 24, 9 through 14, Then they will hand you over to be persecuted, and they will kill you. You will be hated by all, all nations because of my name. Then many will fall away, betray one another, and hate one another. Many false prophets will rise up and deceive many because lawlessness will multiply. The love of many will grow cold. But the one who endures to the end will be saved. This good news of the kingdom will be proclaimed in all the world as a testimony to all nations, and then the end will come. So Jesus goes on to say, this is more about what is going to happen at the end and talking about the tribulation. And of course, there's a lot of controversy there. Some say that it's the second coming is going to happen before the tribulation. Some say in the middle of the tribulation. Some say at the end. But it's up to the Lord when this actually happens. But it is also true that we should expect persecution and, and suffering because persecution is, is suffering that is inflicted on us to intimidate us, to silence us, and to punish us. And a lot of it involves them trying to convert us to some other religion. Like like Islam. So there is, of course, a lot of persecution going on all over the world. But we see it a lot there in North Korea, Afghanistan, Somalia, also Libya, and and in Pakistan. And because of the persecution throughout the world, many will fall away. And of course, this is a problem to the church. Uh, uh, people fall away because of fear. Uh, some, some doubt, some are angry, and some 
just want to sin and they don't want to be involved with anything about the Lord. Others assume that those that fall away were never saved in the first place. But we know this, that those of us that God calls cannot be snatched out of his hand. That's in John 10, verses 27 through 29. That's why we can stand strong for the Lord. Knowing what the end is, is going to be that we're going to be with him forever in eternity. Jesus said that they will actually hand you over to the ungodly authorities. And so they fear for their lives so they turn you over and you pay the price. Because when you're talking about your family and your friends, you can be compelled to do things that you would not normally do. He said that they would hate us they would hate one another. And so we have been commanded to love one another. And he calls this a sign that we are his followers. That's in John 13, verses 35, uh, 34 and 35. And we should expect to be hated. That's in Matthew 10, 22, Luke 6, 22, and Luke 21, 17, and John 15, 18. But we should love and pray for those that hate us. That's in Matthew 5, 43 and 44 and Luke 6, 27. He warned us that these false teachers and these false prophets, they will deceive many. So we are to watch out for them. More than ever, we have an urgent need to discern what these people say and what they stand for. Jesus said that there would be greater lawlessness and we see that in our world today, not only in the world, but in our country, we see that. So, we need to stand for our Lord and Savior against those that scorn us and rebel against God and His precepts. It is the essence of, of sin in 1 John 3, 4. Jesus said that many will grow cold in their love. They have and will lose their first love, which we have, of course, read about in, in the book of Revelation. But there is a lot of difference between those who fall away 
and those who are true and faithful uh, to our Lord and who will persevere uh, to the end. So he promised that those who stand firm and who also persevere will be saved, of course, and no one can snatch them out of his hand. And we will spend everlasting life with him. Jesus predicted that the future before he returns, this good news of the kingdom will be proclaimed to all the world. <clears throat> now we know that that hasn't happened yet, that there are, there are millions there in Russia, China, India, that have never heard the good news even even one time. So there is much work for us to do. We need to share the good news. And that is, of course, part of the Great Commission. And we are, are sending missionaries worldwide. There are a lot of radio programs that are going out all over the world, uh, a lot of TV. Uh, so at some point, all of the world will hear the good news. So we need to be ready to share the, all the good news, we need to do the Great Commission. And when that happens, the end will come. But not until all of the people of the world have heard the gospel. So, how do we live this out? We need to understand and to take some time this week to write down your views about the second coming of our Lord and Savior and the end of the, of the world. So open your Bibles and read Matthew 24 and 25 and it will lead to other scriptures and also, also the book of Revelation. And then it would be good to also memorize Matthew 24, 8, which says all these events are the beginning of the labor pain, the wars and the rumors of war, the earthquakes and the famines and all of the other events like that. And then it would be good to go over a list of all of your family members, your friends uh, who are not believers. And you can take steps to share the good news with them uh, as you can. We need to spread the gospel message. Let us pray. Our Lord and God, even in the times of fear and uncertainty, help us to stand firm in our love, our trust, and our faith in you. Lord, we ask that the Holy Spirit would help us to make this stand, that we should get into your word, Lord, and understand it and 
also be able to share it, Lord. Help us to let others know about your good news, about your salvation. And I pray this in the name of your Son, our Savior. His name is Jesus Christ. Amen.